Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N. This week is another robot review video supported by Apator as I show you coding with Robot Q. Let's check it out. In the last robot review video I did where I looked at Robot Q, I showed you the introductory race car and how to use the controller. In that video, I also mentioned that you can code with Robot Q and that is what I'm going to look at in this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my Apator app. When you open up the app, you're faced with three options. These are Control, Build and Code. If you click on Build, it shows you the 20 possible designs that you can make using Robot Q. But I'm going to come out of that and I'm going to click into code. Now, if you're not familiar with coding, don't worry. You'll see when I push that code button, I'm given four options. These are new code, introductory course, code samples and my code. I'm going to go into the introductory course. This gives you an introduction to the block coding used with RobotQ, as well as guides for coding lots of the different designs. I'm going to select lesson two, teasing a gorilla with a banana. When I click into this, you'll see that step one of three is to build the gorilla. And when I hit on build, it's going to open up the instructions just like I had for the race car. So I'm going to follow these instructions to build the Robot Q gorilla. And while I do that with the footage sped up, I'm going to give you some interesting gorilla facts. There are two species of gorillas, Eastern and Western. And these species split down into further groups, which are Eastern Lowland Gorillas, Eastern Mountain Gorillas, Western Lowland Gorillas and Western Cross River Gorillas. Gorillas are very social animals who live together in groups and they spend a lot of time moving around their habitat in family groups which are known as troops. Gorillas can also weigh over 200 kilograms and stand as tall as an average human and they eat up to around 30 kilograms of plants per day. Adult males are known as silverbacks, and these powerful males can be more than 10 times stronger than an average human. They can tear down banana trees, bend iron bars, and bite with more power than a lion. Gorillas are very clever and have been recorded making and using tools. Scientists have spotted wild gorillas using sticks to work out the depth of rivers and streams, making ladders from bamboo to help baby gorillas reach the treetops, and even fashioning cutlery from twigs. Gorillas' nose prints are as unique as human fingerprints. As a result, scientists can identify individual gorillas by paying close attention to the shape of their nose. Unique scars or marks on their faces can also help. There was once a captive gorilla called Coco who learned sign language. She was a female Western Lowland gorilla and over her lifetime she learned over 1,000 signs and was able to understand more than 2,000 English words. Sadly, gorillas are critically endangered. The biggest threat they face is habitat destruction, which leaves gorillas with fewer safe spaces to live. However, conservation efforts are working. One subspecies, the mountain gorilla, has recently seen a record population high. At the last count, 1,063 of these awesome apes were found in the wild. Now that I've built my gorilla, it's time to move on to step two. And when I flick over to step two, you'll see it's giving a description of what will happen when I run the coding which is already pre-programmed into the app. This is saying that when I hold the bananas close in front of the gorilla's face, it's going to recognise the sight of them and then it is going to move towards them. So I'm going to hit the run button, which is that play button down in the bottom right corner, hold the bananas up to my gorilla's face and watch what happens. You'll notice that the gorilla is moving towards the bananas and that is because of that sensor that's on the front of the gorilla's face just below its eyes. I'm going to move on to step three now. This is saying that you can also give a sound to the gorilla because if a gorilla couldn't get to its food, it would not be very happy. To do this, we need to add in the appropriate sound under the when run button is played block, which is down there in the coding section. So I'm going to go into the sounds and there's one there which says play music and music one, but I can see that both of these have an arrow next to them, meaning there's a drop down option. So I'm going to pull that over and explore if my sound is in there. Well, I can change the music part to play a sound, and then I can change from sound one down through different sound numbers. I'm going to need to select each different sound number and hit the run button until I find a sound appropriate for my gorilla.
and it didn't take very long because Sound 3 is an appropriate sort of gorilla roar. The great thing about the coding in Apatow is it uses block coding like most other robots that I've encountered, and it's also common in a lot of coding apps for children. So this is something that's not going to be unfamiliar to younger users, and also for people who have not experienced coding before, block coding is very simple and easy to pick up, as each block describes exactly what it does, and they join together like jigsaw pieces. So if something isn't attaching onto something else, you'll know that it's not meant to be used there. The introduction to coding and the different guides for the designs are a great aspect of the Apatow app for people who have no experience with coding, for them to get to grips with the block coding. But as I say, it is very simple. So now I've seen an example of how this gorilla can be coded, I'm going to go back to the main coding screen where I've got the option of new code next to the introductory course. And I'm going to hit on new code and create my own wee bit of code for my gorilla. It's just going to be something very simple. The simple code I'm going to create is under that when run button is pushed block, I'm just going to add in for the motors to be moving clockwise because I saw on the previous coding that's what my gorilla needs to move forward. And I'm going to set its speed to a speed of 5. Under that I'm going to put in a wait 2 seconds block. And then I'm going to put in the sound block for that gorilla roar that I discovered earlier. So I'm going to change music to sound and then select sound 3. I'm then going to have another wait 2 seconds and then I'm going to add in stop motors. Otherwise the gorilla would just keep going until I hit the stop button on the code, but I want the code to stop the gorilla itself. Now that I've put in that piece of simple coding, I'm going to sit the gorilla on the table, hit that bit of coding and see if my gorilla does move forward and roar and then stop like I have programmed it to do. And that was a successful test, my gorilla did exactly what I thought it would do with its coding. This is one of the things I really like about the Apator app, is not only does it give you a guide for successful coding, but you can also get creative. And coding is about that creativity. You put in blocks, you try your code and see if it works, and if it doesn't work, you need to problem solve to figure out why it didn't work. And this is a very important skill for children and young people to develop, and this is a very fun way, and a hands-on way, for them to develop that skill. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. A huge thank you again to Apator for sending me RobotQ and supporting this robot review video. I'll put a link to the Apator website down in the description so you can check them out. If you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here, and I've added links here to the STEM demonstration and explanation videos I do, here to my other robot review videos, and here to my STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr. N's Robot Review, showing you how to code with Robot Q.